Hey there, thank you for watching. Since we've launched Fairphone 4, we have received tons of questions about uh, our new products. So we thought it was a, a good way to bring all those questions together in one video and ask around some people in the office to answer them. For those that don't know, an audio jack is a specific connector that you use with your headphones. Um, for us, it has been a design decision. So in order to make this phone last for five, and even more years uh, to, together with our five years warranty, it is important that we remove any part of the phone that may break. And since the audio jack um, uh, fulfills a function that can also be done via your charging port, with the, the so-called USB-C, so the one that you also use for, uh, for charging, we said, hey, let's bring those two functions together and then let's just put it into one uh, yeah, USB port or connector. The USB port that we are using, of course, as you are used with Fairphone, uh, with Fairphone in general, is highly repairable, so it's super easy to change. And it's much more sturdy and durable than the classic uh, uh, mini jack connector. So we hope that with this decision, you can actually have a phone that lasts much longer. Another argument as well is that the, the audio jack is normally a typical place where dust uh, gets in and also water gets in. So that's also a good way to uh, remove an oil vulnerability uh, of the phone. Plus I will add that Fairphone 4 is a pretty complex product. So it's a 5G product with a lot of antennas and we needed a lot of space inside the device. So anything that we could really uh, take out to gain that space, to be able to provide uh, space to all those other functions was uh, very important. So if you have uh, headphones with mini jack connector, please head to our shop to buy the, uh, the adapter and uh, you'll be good to go. Fairphone 4, we made a conscious decision to really, really look for a very long time into what camera, what hardware we were going to use. Um, the camera, as we speak, is still under development, so the hardware is there and you will receive it with your phone. The software is still being improved, so this is something that uh, you will see improvements over the next uh, software updates. But the the truth is that the hard, we don't feel the hardware will need to be upgraded very soon. So it's very good. So it's two 48 megapixel cameras, wide and ultra wide. So we think that will cover uh, your needs for a very long time. Maybe in the future, we may uh, develop a new camera with a different proposition. We don't know yet. Uh, but for now, we think this one is a, is a very good camera, both from a hardware and a, and a, and a software uh, perspective. And we don't expect it to have to upgrade it in the, in the short term. We believe that Fairphone 4 is an attractive offer for the ones who really care how their phone is being produced. If you look at the cost of the price, it consists of, uh, of many parts. Uh, one, for example, is the, the modular design of the phone, which makes it easy to repair. Uh, another element is the premium uh, materials we use, so actually it's easier to, to stay in love with your phone for a longer period of time. We also have clear <laughs> user benefits, like an industry-leading 5-year warranty up-to-date specifications, like high-quality cameras, 5G support, or eSIM. We also invest in good working conditions, uh, improving worker well-being in the entire value chain, uh, but also in fair, uh, recycled, or responsibly mined materials uh, throughout the entire chain, and this comes with a cost. So we've launched the Fairphone earbuds. Uh, these are, um, yeah, wireless, so they connect via Bluetooth to your phone. I guess the easy answer is no, or definitely not as repairable as uh, Fairphone 4. They, we've done them in a way that they are more fair because they include fair trade gold in them, uh, in the supply chain of the, of the earbuds, and they include also uh, recycled plastics on the earbuds. So this is already a step in the right direction. But the earbuds is a new product category for us. And like we did with Fairphone 1 back in 2013, we take it step by step. So for now, we've launched these uh, earbuds that we have uh, a license from a company. Um, we have worked on the quality of the earbuds and on the fair materials, but not yet on repairability. This is something that we might address later in the future. We've done that in the past. So with Fairphone 3 and Fairphone 3 Plus, you could, for example, uh, use the cameras, right? So you could upgrade the Fairphone 3 with uh, with a new camera and, and turn it into a, a little bit of a Fairphone 3 Plus. 
Um, with Fairphone 4, it's a little bit more complex. Uh, Fairphone 4 is a 5G device. That means the whole uh, way how it's built, the architecture, how it's designed inside, it's completely different. And um, we need that uh, uh, for it to work really well in these new 5G networks. It has uh, multiple antennas and we need uh, more space inside to allow for those antennas. So it is, I would say, very difficult, nearly impossible to uh, make it possible for uh, Fairphone 3 um, modules to be used in Fairphone 4. If only, for example, the battery, you know, maybe some of you may say, hey, but the battery, that's something that you could reuse. Even the battery for Fairphone 4, we needed a, a bigger battery because the display is a little bit bigger, the um, uh, chipset is a little bit more powerful, it has more antennas, so you need a bit of a, of a bigger battery also for, uh, for that one. So that's why it is very difficult, close to impossible to do that uh, between Fairphone 3 and Fairphone 4. Uh, as a scale-up, we've been expanding our, our business to already 16 European countries today uh, and we plan to expand further in the coming years. However, if you look at expanding into different continents, that requires a bit more time because we need to develop a completely new phone and also set up a completely new service organization to deliver a great customer experience. Considering the time and investments required, yeah, this will take a bit longer. I guess this question comes from the fact that we launched Fairphone 3 Plus in 2020, so that's uh, a year ago. But I want to take one step back to answer this question. So uh, first I'd like to say again that Fairphone is trying to change the industry from, uh, from inside out. And our mission is to, uh, to establish a viable market for ethical uh, consumer electronics, and in this way inspire the rest of the industry. For that to happen, we need to stay relevant in the market. So while keeping our uh, users using the previous devices, we need to be able to reach uh, an audience that is bigger and make products that are appealing to this new audience. And while Fairphone 3 will remain, we'll still uh, offer spare parts and uh, software support as we've been communicating. Um, we believe that at the point we are now, we need to, uh, the answer to our next level of fare is really Fairphone 4. It's a 5G device, uh, that can do everything that uh, Fairphone 4 can do. If we would not have this new phone, we would not be able to uh, come up with all the different projects that we've started now with Fairphone 4. So Fairphone 4 is an e-waste neutral device. Uh, Fairphone 4 is a, a device with a five years warranty. This, only these two and many others, but if only these two as examples, these are really unique uh, propositions that are new into the market and for what we needed a new uh, device so I hope that answers why, while we might have launched a new device in one year, that does not mean that we are going to stop support for, for our previous devices. So our previous devices will still keep on uh, yeah, being working for years to come, while now we have a new device with which we can appeal, a wider, appeal to a wider audience and uh, make a new promise for longevity. Actually, we have never included a charger by default. So this was a decision we took already in Fairphone 1 back in 2013, uh, where we realized that most of the people already had a charger that they could use. Uh, and if they didn't have it, then they could always buy it in our shop. So we already decided to remove uh, the charger. This saves resources and CO2 emissions, of course, because all these chargers that uh, uh, people don't need are just simply not produced. So that's uh, very good. That was it for today. I hope you liked it. Uh, if you have more questions, you can always drop them down the video and we will make sure that we do this periodically so that you get all the answers. Thank you.